Aha, you didn't think I was gonna return, but poof, here I am. We're gonna make our website faster today. This is something that uh, will probably be better for a more established website. Thank you all so much for joining me. So today we're gonna be investigating, researching, and picking our WordPress caching plugin. What the heck is a caching plugin? Why do we want it? I'm gonna give you the layman's definition of it because I am no technical wizard when it comes to this stuff. Here's the layman's definition. A caching plugin for your website and for your WordPress website specifically is gonna help your page load faster, which is gonna be a better experience for your user when they click on your website. And it will hopefully increase retention of said user. The biggest contributing factors to slow page load speed would be video ads, banner ads, right? Those things that dynamically generate. Images, think about the gift jack, we have an image up top, that's our featured image or the article. And then we have images for every product. So theoretically, one of my articles that has 10 reviews and 10 images is gonna load faster than one of my articles that has 50 products and subsequently 50 images. So the caching plugin will help make everything fast from a top line. What is it actually doing? Again, from a layman's perspective, it takes every web page that we have has a bunch of code on it. And so when you ask to go to that web page, a lot of things in the back end have to happen. But what you can do with these caching plugins is you install it and all it does is turn all that code for your page into a static HTML page, basically, that somebody can quickly access and it's cached. So all of them are stored individually for easy access when anybody wants to go to a specific page on your website. Now, we'll get into the pros and cons of that. The obvious issue with that is if you have a cached page and you update it, it still has the cached version. So you need to make sure you go back and have the system recache it. So let's dig in and we're going to look at the top five caching plugins for WordPress. We're going to look at pros and cons of all of those. And then we're going to pick the one that we think best fits our business. And we're just going to set it up really quickly. And we're, we're going to try and find a free plugin. All right. So let's just see what our page speed is because we're going to want to look at it. We're going to want to look at our page speed before and after we do one of these caching plugins. All right. So this is where 98 here. We'll just uh, do a quick test on article page as well. All right. So we're at 95 here, but there's some structural issues. So my guess is it's because of all the Amazon images that have to load WordPress caching plugins. And we're going to find a list. All right. WP rocket. So it's a one click cache. So it caches settings like GSIP compression, page cache, and cache preloading. And then there's lazy loading images. That's interesting. I wonder if we can utilize that since our Amazon pictures are getting pulled in dynamically. They're not static images. I wonder if that will work. We can lazy load. Lazy load basically says it, it doesn't load the picture until it's in the screen or in the viewpoint for the user. So if we have a list of 53 images, all of them don't need to load. Only the ones that are like, you know, the first five will load until they scroll down. All right, we got W3 total cache. So it has the same stuff, although it has some limited minification support it says beginners may find w3 total cache a bit difficult there's a little bit more detailed install wp super cache it's free so all these seem to have the same feature sets i've never heard of security so as a website firewall security comes with a built-in option to cache your website content enable gsip compression this is gonna be a different topic for a different video but this sounds like it's a mixture of caching plus cloudflare i'm almost positive i'm not going to use it very very interesting all right so we got to find one more all right so let's look at cache enabler oh here we go they got some actual research on these this is number one on our list so it's a premium plugin so caching for one website is listed at 39 dollars. so we'd be investing a couple bucks up front to get an easy to use plugin. So WP Super Cache has page caching and not browser caching, but WP Rocket has both. All right, so apparently it helps optimize the database. You can also lazy load the media. We know that our competitors lazy load, by the way. It's also compatible with Cloudflare. That's gonna be a separate subject, but we might have to get set up with Cloudflare as well. It has multi-site compatibility in case you're running several sites. You can also preload the cache so you can can take your existing website, hit a button and just preload it. Pretty comprehensive package of tools from WP Rocket. 
All right, let's look at total cash because I know they have it here. Free solution, but it's far from perfect. And this is the second time now we've heard that it's hard to understand. So it's free, it's open source. So it integrates with a CDN. This is like your Cloudflare. It works with mobile friendly sites. So all the features are included in the free version. They are not gonna upsell us on anything. So the plugin is compatible with all sorts of hosting objects. So we're using shared hosting and we're gonna look at our shared host and see what they recommend, by the way. We wanna know what folks on those platforms are using because those matter the most to us. A lot of the features of these products are the same or sound very similar. It's really a question of how are they deployed, how easy are they to get set up, and then how much does it cost? All right, now we're gonna get into WP Supercache. So this is also open source. One of the benefits of Supercache is you have three caching modes. So you got like a beginner, a middle, and an expert ground. I think that kind of covers it. This this one is differentiated, same as W3 Total Cache, except has three install modes. Yeah, we're gonna look at Comet Cache. This is one that has both free and paid. So it sounds like the paid starts at 39 bucks. So very similar to WP Rocket. So this one excels at documentation. And what do we hate most? Documentation. I don't wanna have to go read through a bunch of help docs to figure out how to get this thing to work. I just wanna set it up and forget about it. They do say it's fairly easy to set up and install though. The free version does some of the same tasks, but you have to do some tasks manually. Oh boy, uh, that just turned me off. I don't wanna have to go in and cache anything manually on a daily or weekly or monthly basis. All right, so this is the first one that we've seen that you can cache separate pages. I'm guessing most of them have this ability. This is the first one we've seen called out though. So if, if content syndication is in the realm of your business, you should research this if you're looking at RSS feeds. We are not right now. The premium version is similar to WP Rocket. All right, let's do a quick look at what the heck Securi is. So what Securi does is it has a cloud proxy firewall that bypasses all traffic before sending it to the hosting server. So they basically host the content themselves. My worry again with researching this is it it conflates two issues, right? We're looking for caching. This is something that includes caching, but is also has a bigger component, which is security and this like kind of CDN aspect. So we're gonna just say, uh, not for us, not really caching plugin. My web host actually gives me instructions for how to install WP Supercache. They're basically telling me how to set it up. And that means tacitly they're recommending it. They got total cache. And look at this, they got a video for this one. The next thing I just wanna quickly check is I wanna check what my WordPress theme recommends. Wait a second, they're saying, what is auto-optimize? Interesting, so it doesn't do the HTML page caching, it just optimizes something. Okay, so there's a lot of settings, which is not the greatest. Um, I'm thinking that Generate Press already has a list of the best settings based on what we just read. All right, so to complicate things even more, we could theoretically use both of these things at the same time. So in the interest of focusing on page caching, we're gonna omit auto-optimize for now. All right, we're gonna give Supercache a shot. So the nice thing is we got instructions from our host. So make sure you check your host website. Just do a quick Google search, see if they talk about any of these caching plugins. So it's gonna make it easy for us to get set up here. All right, we're in our WordPress. So we'll go to plugins. We'll go to add new. We're going to search for Supercache. There it is. It has 2 million installs. We'll install and activate it. This should be completely free. So it's down here. All right, so we're going to go into settings. We're going to do caching on. So now our website should start caching. We're going to hit update status. So now it should start caching the website. We don't see these two advanced settings anywhere. So this may be an old article for an older version. Hopefully it's not too important. So we're gonna mentally make note of this and see if we see this anywhere else in the settings, but we weren't able to do this. So what did they say to do? They said to do select page compression, this one. So we're gonna compress our pages. We're gonna select 304 not modified browser caching. Here's the thing, these are recommended but disabled because some hosts have problems with it, right? So this is very important that you look at what your host recommends and if it's compatible. We also want to select cache rebuild. Oh, it's already selected, so cache rebuild, cool. Extra homepage checks, yep, right there. So you see this, got that one. And do not cache pages for known users. 
I think that's up here. That might be this one. All right, so we're gonna select update status. We were able to get some of those done, by the way, not all of them. There it is. So we're gonna click this. All right, now we need to find expiry time and garbage collection, and we wanna set 3,600. Okay, so it is this one. So we just wanna double that. So we're gonna change expiration there, and I think now we should be set up at least with some basic caching. All right, so I don't think anything is cached yet then. Let's just test it, I guess. Okay, so it looks like it worked. I'm just gonna test to see if anything has happened to our speed test here. Here we go. So while that one's running, we're gonna grab our this article that we had also tested. Sig says, you don't use Google speed page. I will now. So GT metrics looks about the same on the homepage. Let's see if anything has changed with this article page. We'll also go do a Google speed page test. Again, I'm not I'm not sure anything is actually cached at this point. See if we see any changes. Okay, so clearly something did happen. Our grade here was a B prior to the caching plugin. Before caching, this was 95. Before, this was 76. So it, it hasn't moved a lot. I'm guessing that what happened was these numbers moved. We hadn't tracked these numbers. So we'll, we'll have to just keep an eye on this over the next couple of days. Otherwise, I'm going to basically assume this is a set it and forget it type of thing. All right, let's do a page speed. See what Google thinks about our website, by the way. We're looking for hundreds hundreds across the board. Oh, Google does not like us. What doesn't Google like us about us? Interesting. So that's on mobile. A little bit better on desktop, by the way. The good news is with caching is a lot of these things should get improved. So if your numbers are even lower than mine, they should go up as a result of using it. Well, while we're here, let's just check that article as well. So this has got like 50 images it has to load. So we'll see what happens with this. Yeah, it's even slower on the, the article page. Yeah, this went from 85 to 80. This went from like, what was it? 56 or something. Anyways, we'll have to figure out what all this stuff is. I feel like the numbers are still all right, but you know, definitely come and check both of these out. We had only been testing out our GT metrics. All right, so that was our wrap up for five of the best plugins for WordPress caching. We definitely went down a couple of different rabbit holes. We have some more investigating to do with other programs. So we're gonna be looking at CDNs like Cloudflare at some point or security type plugins for WordPress. We're also gonna have to look at that auto optimize piece, which might help us increase our page load speeds even more. So that will be something we'll probably just mix into another video. We got introduced to Google page speed. We had been previously using GT metrics to measure our page speed. Now we're going to be looking at both. I will say that after going through our plugins, researching the top five, and then going ahead and installing our super cache plugin, we saw some slight improvement to page speed, I would say. We'll see if that continues and how that looks, but easy to say. Up. I'm taking the mindset of it's set up and forget it. So next week is going to be all about backlinks. So now it's, we got content out in the world. How do we get people to be interested in it? And what strategies are there out there in getting backlinks? And that's going to be a big series. It's probably going to be a three-day series that we're going to spend just on backlinks. So we'll see you tomorrow. We'll get ready for that and appreciate you being here. Thank you so much. Take care.